We have Gary Sheffield in the building, ladies and gentlemen, on Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast. GPR, 2021 coming at you. I'm going to be one of your hosts today. Hatch, my other host. T.O., we are in the building. We are I up want you guys here. to subscribe to the Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast on the Himalaya app or wherever you get your podcast. And you know what I did find out over the break, T? So all you listeners out there, right? I'm talking to my family. I'm like, you guys make sure you guys subscribe. And we say subscribe. They've been subscribing to only the YouTube version, the video version. So all you listeners out there, we need you to also go to the audio version of this. So Himalaya app, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your audio at, Go on there and subscribe as well to GPR, Get Your Popcorn Rate Podcast. We appreciate the love. We appreciate all the support. But again, don't just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please go out and to, uh, subscribe on all the audio outlets, you know, Spotify, Apple, Himalaya, or wherever you get your podcast. Yep, yep. And definitely subscribe, share, like, love, all of that. Give us some feedbacks, comment. We need all that information and all the subscribers that we have thus far. We appreciate the love you've been giving us. Let's make it bigger and better in 2021. And let's kick this thing off. We got our first guest of the 2021 season this year, Gary Sheffield of the Major League Baseball. Yes, sir. Gary Sheffield coming to the stage on GPR. Get your popcorn ready podcast coming up next with your host Hatch and T.O. Yeet. There it is. Well, shoot. Yeah. Welcome to Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast. Gary, appreciate you coming on. Again, Thanks first guest of 2021. Like I said, we go tell our audience, give them, like I said, you know, we come from the football world, of course. You're coming from baseball. Again, 22 seasons in the Major League Baseball, world champion right. ring with the Marlins. Again, played with eight, what, eight teams? Eight teams. Eight yes. teams in Major League Baseball, which is absolutely crazy. Five times Silver Slugger Award winner. Uh, again, welcome to the show. We appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks for having me, man. This is, hey, man, I'm, I'm glad to be the first of 2021. T.O.'s always been my guy, man. I've always rooted for him. We all we don't had lots of talks mm. about, you know, both of our careers. You know, we we, we, right. we have a lot of similarities and a lot of things. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm just anxious to uh, to validate your points yeah, definitely. and validate mine. Absolutely. Well, let, let, as you know, as an outsider from you two's relationship, like tell, give me a, like an example of what, you know, baseball and football, can get, we're both coming from the athletic space, obviously, but again, give the, the audience kind of an insight <laughs> what the baseball player and football player would be talking about. Cause we're not talking about specifics of the sport. You're talking about just being an athlete and how your careers are going. So kind of give us an example of one of those stories you're talking about. It's more about the person. It's mm-hmm. about the personality of the person. You know, T.O. was great at what he did. I was great at what I did. But, you know, we don't have to go out here and try to convince anybody that we belong on the field and the ball should come to T.O. and this should be my team and you should mm-hmm. treat me and put me in a marriage. If you look at a T.O., T.O. should be married to an organization mm-hmm. because now when T.O. is married to that organization, T.O. got – he got levels to this. He can go that most people can never get to. And mm-hmm. that's the same thing with me. I got mm-hmm. levels I can go to as a baseball player that I know nobody can reach. Yep. But if we're not married, if you're not married to me, why am I motivated to go play with a broke mm-hmm. foot in the Super Bowl? Why mm-hmm. I'm going to go play with a, a torn mm-hmm. labrum in my right shoulder if you're not married to me? If you're giving right. me a two or three year deal, Mm. And you give this guy a 10 year deal, you married to him, you're not married to me. Uh, yeah. And so people misunderstand us because all we want is to be married to an organization. We want respect from, you know, not only the teammates, we want respect from the organization and you're going to respect what we bring to the table. Mm-hmm. Right. When you take when you speak of it in that term, and you're talking about marriage, you think of a relationship. That's yeah, right. you 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 want to be the significant other. You don't want to be the side chick. No, you know I mean? no, you don't want to be the side piece. <laughs> no, but see, but they but they want to label receivers divas because they rely on another person. Right. Right. Well, they well he got to be right. just as important as you are, right. and you got to rely on me, and you know I'm capable of. But then there's other reasons and factors that gets in the way 
that nobody, well, T.O. can't explain it to you where you want to understand it and listen to it. And I can't explain it right. because you don't want to listen to us or see it the way we see it. Mm -hmm. But that's where we get into situations where people start saying, oh, he's this, he's that. Right. No, all I'm asking for is what's rightfully mine. Right. And, and that's again, how I look at it. We had we had Shannon Sharp on the show and he says something about one thing that T was missing, that he never had anyone in the locker room conveying the T.O. message. Right. Do you ever right. feel that you had it would have helped if you had somebody in you guys locker room saying Gary's right. You should you know, you should have us back Would that have helped you think, you know, throughout your career. Well, that would have, that would have helped me tremendously. And I know T.O., mm -hmm. I, I don't speak for T.O., but I know that would have helped him. If right, Jerry absolutely. Rice would have said, listen yes. to this man. This man is this. Mm -hmm. He's going to be the next guy coming after me. And while I'm here, fe feature him as well. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's going to help everybody. And I think I got that early on in my career uh, with Dave Parker and uh, Don Baylor. But then once the 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 the, the, the um, my talent start coming around and I start playing well, they felt like, okay, we fixed the problem. Now we can get rid of Don Baylor and, and, and Dave Parker. And then mm -hmm. once they did that, we went back to the, the, the bad part about the business. And mm -hmm. so I think that there's always have to be a teammate when you see a guy like myself and, and T.O. Think about this for a second. If T.O. has a, a, a 10 catch game for 200 yards and I hit two home runs, and we lose, mm -hmm. me and T.O. are, are going to get the questions asked, mm -hmm. the tough questions, because, see, people don't understand when people are asking you questions, there's questions that they ask Derek Jeter, and there's questions that they ask Gary Sheffield, or they mm -hmm. ask Ter Terrell Owens, or they uh, uh, Terrell, that because I know you got on random off about it. <laughs> <laughs> Terrell. It's Terrell. 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 Yeah, so so <laughs> if, if they, they, they ask Donovan McNabb, so they're going to ask them two different questions in totally mm -hmm. different ways with totally different respect behind it. And Absolutely. so when we we say what we say in our answer, they get mad at us because if you wouldn't have came at me that way, mm -hmm. when I saw there was motive behind your question, then you're going to have to take my answer based on how you asked the question. Mm -hmm. Now, if you would ask me the question with respect mm -hmm. and understood what you were seeing, my questions will be asked the same way Derek Jesus' questions asked, and you probably get the same answer. Mm -hmm. But that's what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Absolutely. Yeah, because, I mean, like I said, being a player, and I tell T this all the time, I'm like, I, my confidence with my – my own abilities was, you know, through the roof, right? I always believed in myself, right. but it was always maximized at 99.9% .9 because I never had the teammate or the veteran really say or do anything to believe in me. It was always right. going to be a 0.01% left out there because I never got that from a teammate. And I, and so I feel you, because you guys is total, you know, on a different level, of course, but it's like, I understand that terminology of, the lot the locker room has a lot to do with the perception of who you are. That's right. And, and but, it, but but being in that locker, you know, I I, I pay attention to everything T.O. did on the field. I, mm -hmm. I paid attention to what people said about him. A lot of it bothered me because I can relate. Relate. I yeah. can relate from the standpoint of that they don't know this man. They right. don't know the person that I know. Mm -hmm. And when when I know that T.O. he don't get in trouble. He shows mm -hmm. up on time and he shows up ready. As a teammate, that's all you need and that's yeah. all you should want. How is that a cancer to a team? How is that tearing mm -hmm. your locker room apart? How is not having the ball in T.O. is going to help you? Mm -hmm. So when you really look at the totality of it all, you know, you have a bunch of jealous players, you have yeah. a jealous media, and you have a lot of jealousy going on. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, T.O. is a country boy. I'm a country boy. When you when you certain things you don't know, you just don't know. But yeah. when you know, you do right. better. And that's how yeah. I always looked at it. If, if you would have told me this and you tell me this, I'll take it at face value and do better. Right. And I think you guys both hit on something. And we're talking about personalities. You're talking about perception and, and obviously the media portrayal. Uh, when you talk about the both of us and how our personalities was a little bit uh, more outspoken, um, I guess it has been described as maybe a little abrasive um, at times. 
Um, but as you said, that's that's just who we are. You ask us something, we're going to give you honesty. And as you said, Gary, I think you put it best. Um, yeah, if it's a, when, you, when you talk about the two different players, just say you and then a, and a Derek Jeter. Yeah, they're going to ask us two different questions. And we probably been given that question, asked the question that, you know, was uh, given to or asked of uh, uh, Derek Jeter. Maybe, as you said, it would have been. You know, it would have been different. <laughs> you no, know, it would have been answered different too. What you said yeah, about players advocating, uh, speaking on. <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to speak on the fact of uh, about you know players speaking up on other players' behalf, and I think you know if that was the case, and had I had players really stand up, you know, for me, um, I think obviously I would probably be be viewed a bit differently um, in the eye of uh, eye of the public. I think the way the media has portrayed me, um, again, it has affected me post-career because when you think about, uh, you know, what I'm trying, some of the things that I can do, a uh, football career uh, in the business world or what have you, um, I know this for a fact because I've had people that have tried to uh, secure different business opportunities and they haven't gone through because of how the media has portrayed me as a negative individual. And that that has really, again, that perception has affected me financially as far as ba being able to maximize, you know, uh, things or what have you. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. I understand that if I didn't, if I wasn't the Hall of Famer that I am today, it would really be truly hard to make a living um, based on, like I said, you know, uh, not being able to uh, to really just pursue some of those things that I that I would like to pursue. But, but Theo, because, hold that point right there. Hold that point because okay. I want to share something with you on what you're saying. Right. What they would have found out about what you were saying if they didn't kill the messenger and listen to the message. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you want to side over here, over here, right. and it's coming from me, but you want to kill the messenger, you probably would have found truth into what I was saying. Mm -hmm. And so not only that it hurts you, and if you wasn't in the Hall of Fame, it hurts you to make, you know, the, the, you know with the way you live or whatever. The right. bottom line is hurting them too. Because a guy like you and a guy like me, but what we brought to the table, we can make a lot of companies a lot of money. Mm, and so right. it hurts both parties. So mm -hmm. you don't really get what you should get if right. the truth meet the surface. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm all about truth. I know you all about truth. So if somebody got something to say over here, then let's meet in the middle and let's bring it to the table and let's see who's right and who's wrong. And nobody ever wanted to do that. Right. They just want to kill the message, right. and then that way they discredit you, and they say, oh, that's why people throw up the word character. And that's right. why my book was in, uh, titled Inside Character, because I know you. You have right. inside character. I have inside character. Right. Most people have outside character to the public, and that's the perception that they want to portray. Right. And we're right. not like that. We're no. What you get from us, that's who we are. Yeah. Right. Now, did you have any of those real conversations with with uh, Derek Jeter or Alex Rodriguez when you're playing with them as far as that's what you were looking for from a teammate? I, I, I did have a conversation with Derek Jeter uh, mm -hmm. because Derek saw what I was bringing to the table in New York. And he, he knows Derek mm -hmm. Jeter. Is, he's a great person. He's a great player. But Derek Jeter knows he's not the type of player that I am. Mm -hmm. I'm a type of player. By myself, I can change the game in one, one swoop. One swing. And right. not just one game. We're talking about for an entire season. Mm -hmm. Now, Derek Jeter can, uh, can impact a game, you know, and he can take it for a month or whatever. But when you look at the end of the season, Derek Jeter's number is going to be here and my number is going to be here. And that's mm -hmm. just the way it is. We know that. He brings a lot to the table for what he does. And I bring a lot to the table for what I does. And he understood that. But what he saw, how the media was treating me, which they couldn't understand why the New York uh, fans never booed me. And that's why <laughs> the, Philly, the Philly fans loved T.O. Because they knew T.O. Right, right. was going to give them 100 every single time. Now, right. with all these things that people are saying about T.O. and myself, then, you know, a lot of people don't like it because they know it ain't true. Mm -hmm. But nobody's going to stand up for it and say, man, y'all wrong about this guy because they don't want to have to deal with negativity. And, and Derek right. told me, he said, Gary, why don't you just answer the questions 
you know, basically like give them simple answers and then that way they get bored and then they'll ask you. Know, <laughs> right. I said, well, Derek, I say, you know, unfortunately, that ain't how the world works. And then we make the world go around all of us, your personality, my personality, because mm-hmm. I, I like I said, I studied T.O. I watched how he play. I know what make him tick on that field. And it's just the challenge, the competitiveness that he has. And that's all it is. Mm-hmm. He want to he going to out competitive you every day of the week. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about players like that, man, because when I'm telling Jeter this, Jeter's saying, man, you you know, you're right. Because, you know, when people are coming at me, that's when you're going to get my best. Mm-hmm. See, when you when you talking about me, you're going to get my best right. because I'm, I'm going to prove to you that I'm this much better than you. And then I'm going to and then I'm going to dance and talk about it after. Yeah, right, right. that's what it becomes. Right. Now, did hey, you, you, hey, you're <laughs> exactly right because that's what I did. Like, I just blocked out the noise. And then again, when you talked about just being country boys, southern boys, or what have you, again, when that, that what you just mentioned there, when yeah, just listening to my grandma just told me to be me. You know what I mean? She always told me to be honest. And that's how I was. And you're just, you're exactly right. When I heard that noise, I heard them saying these things about that, about me, me knowing that they weren't true. Me right. knowing that it was difficult to be in that locker room and be in a, uh, in a space with teammates when they knew the things that they were, that, that, that the media was saying about me, but they couldn't say anything because they knew they were going to jeopardize their job. That's um, right. It, it All right. Let me, let me, let me ask you, know, you this then T. And th- let, this is the stand up and speak for me. But when I stepped on that field, Oh, this is for both of y'all, right? So again, because I with honesty from an athlete is what the the audience doesn't want, it sounds like, right? That's so exactly again, right. Gary, right? Happily married, T right. searching for the next 30 years, right? But <laughs> <laughs> so if your wife, girlfriend comes in a room and says, Babe, how does this do I look fat in this dress? What is your response? Honestly, Hell honestly no. <laughs> Right, you, so right, right. You can't say she looks fat in the dress, right? Exactly. You just can't do it. But you have to come up with the correct answer right. or the correct uh, message for her to say, right. "Don't wear the dress, but you also don't look fat." So I now guess here's the deal. Here's right? the deal. Here's the deal. Now my relationship is set up where I can say that. Oh, I was just about mm, okay. to say that. Okay, that's the thing. I say that. And okay. she can say it, it to me. It has to be somebody right. that gets you, that That's knows right. you, and they know, okay, this is what I want. If, you, if you're with a person and you've dated and you've courted them, you kind of know their personality. You're going to know whether yep. to say, give them the truth right. or give them some heavy in the middle of the type of answer. Yep. But I know Gary, I already knew he was about to say that. <laughs> Knowing who he's dating and she know who, he, who she's dating. Yeah. She knows that she's going to get an honest answer That's right. from Gary. Because he knows we've been together forever. We've been together 23 years, you know, forever, been back right. 20, 22 That's years. Awesome. So he knows. Awesome. Hey, Congratulations and she said the that, same man. thing to me because I, I, you know, I stopped playing. Mm-hmm. When I stopped playing, we start putting on pounds. Yeah. And I always yeah. talk to T about, I was like, man, you, you need to help me with this diet, you know? So, <laughs> but I, because I done got it from my wife. She was like, yeah, hey, man, you get a little plunky. And yeah, so, you know, so I, I go out and I start eating correct and I start getting my body back right. So it's mm-hmm. to help each other. It ain't the, you mm-hmm. know, the bad mouth you. It's just that right. I'm going to give you the truth. Right. So, you know, you need to get it, you know, work on a little bit to get back the way I know you want to be. Yep. Right. And, right. And so, I, I also want to touch on. You good, T? Go ahead. I want to touch on something earlier when. Um, yeah, I wanted to touch on something earlier when uh, just about, you know, identifying you know, with team, you, you, we, we mentioned it in the context of marriage. Um, I know that I played for five teams. You played for eight teams. And when I got nom- uh, was nominated for the Hall of Fame and, you know, I, you know, they went through the process of, you know, every day on the media, you know, a lot of people, you know, talking about why I should be in and what I sh- why I shouldn't be in. They talked about some of the off the field which I didn't have. They talked about off the field issues, which there were none. Uh, but just the fact that I was outspoken. But my point is, part of my knock for for some of the some some people that were, I guess, naysayers or trying to dis, d- detract from, you know, obviously. 
my nod from getting getting into the Hall of Fame was that I played on five teams and that no team identified with me. And that's fine with me because it is what it is. They got they knew what they were getting on the football field. So at the end of the day, I can't really say per se that I I personally identify with any teams, but I know every team that I played for, I gave them 181% of TO and what I was made of every practice, every day on every month, every every time on that football field. I want to ask you of the eight teams that you've played with, with and not necessarily on championship with, who do you identify with most? The Florida Marlins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, and why? I know you. <laughs> because when I first got there, it was a marriage. And I, and mm -hmm. I, and I, for me, and I, I, I can't speak for you on that, but for me, if I'm not married to you, then there's no, you don't get nothing else from me right. but what I bring to the table on the field. I don't do off the field stuff. I don't do anything. I do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And basically, I go about it and do it the way I want to do it. Other than that, I'm not doing the team concept. I'm not doing the the the, the extra stuff that you're not paying me for. I'm not doing the the extra events that that um you know if I know for a fact that I don't count nobody else's money, but if I know for a fact that I should be making more money than somebody on my team, then you ask him to do it. Mm. And and so I that's just being honest. And so. Right. When I was with the Florida Marlins, they gave me a four-year deal within a year when I got there. So now I put up the numbers and then I was in the driver's seat and basically they said they're going to win in five years. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, well then go out and get the players and then let's win. So mm -hmm. they said, okay, well, we want to lock you down for seven years. I said, well, I want to see the players first. Mm -hmm. I, see right. the, I want to see the supporting cast. So they went out and got me everything I needed, and I was the last one to sign my contract. So I signed up a contract wow. total of 12 years. Wow. So when somebody signed you for 12 years, oh, I yeah. never, I, I didn't have to go anywhere. I allowed them to trade me because I had a blanket no trade clause. So that's a marriage. So I you played with that back. I played with a lot of things that was hurt. But the bottom line was I was married to them. And so anything mm -hmm. they asked me to do, I did. I showed up on time. I, I went to events. I did. I, I set up my charity uh, work to represent the Marlins in a certain way in Miami area, all over the uh, Port Lauderdale right. area. So now it's a marriage. So now I'm all in. Right. So when I go to another organization, I only give you what you give me. Right. Yeah. I mean, from what you're saying, you're committed. And with that commitment, you're grateful and there's an appreciation. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and if, if I don't get that, Gary, and I'm going to talk in third term, move how he want to move. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so, Lee, so the Florida experience was a great experience. After that, you went to the um, L.A. I'm not saying the other experience weren't good experiences. Right. But that was the one that I identify with. And that's the one that right. I that I, I bought into everything. Gotcha, gotcha. So that the LA, right? The LA experience had to be great. It's LA. You're playing for the Dodgers, uh, right? Two stints with the uh, the a New York team. Yeah. So as far as like those cities, moving around in those cities, like which fan base you thought supported you the most? Even though you did the most in Florida, did one of those other fan bases support you more as an athlete? Well, you know what, a guy like myself and To, we we had the same effect anywhere we go, mm -hmm. and so. What I enjoyed the most, I would say, is the New York. Just mm -hmm. like I, I, I'm sure T.O. will say the Philly fans because nobody gets rowdier than that. <laughs> and yeah. so what makes athletes like me and him thrive, especially I can speak for me, is that when I know it's rowdy, I operate best in rowdiness. Mm -hmm. I operate best when it's chaotic. I operate best mm -hmm. when the chip's on the line. When, when you're telling me everything is great, right. we love you, that's when you may see a, a mental mistake or something like that, or let, let down. Right. Let but down. but when, I, when I know that you don't think that I'm going to get this done and you're coming for me, I'm, I, I bet on me every time. Right. And I was getting to that before I was rudely interrupted by my partner <laughs> uh, asking about, you know, it was a great it was a great question. He inserted it was a great analogy about the marriage thing, asking me about the why.
wife asking if she's fat or not. Get the point of saying that, yeah, that's what I did. When I knew, like the media was talking about me, I was a hot topic. And I knew, I knew in the back of my mind that they were expecting me to go out in my next game to play poorly. And soon as I played poorly, all that was going to do is validate what they had been saying and all week long right. about T.O. being a, a distraction, being a locker room, this, that, and the other. But when I went out there in that field and I balled out, they couldn't do nothing but talk about my performance. That's so right. that's what I did every year. And I, I'm, I'm proud to, to be who I am and raised by my grandmother and my mom that I was able to somehow they instilled that into in me. And Gary was right. This guy definitely has been watching me because when I got on that field, I I made it a, a conscious effort to, number one, to just go out there and be productive. But I knew with that production, what that was going to do is shut those critics up. But overall, in the grand scheme of things, throughout my 15-year career, the media has unfairly portrayed me to be somebody that I'm not. And it, it, it literally, like I said, it has allowed uh, people that encounter me to approach me different ways. It has enabled, you know, businesses and, and business people to not want to do business um, because of the way that I was portrayed. And at the end of the day, like I said, I am who I am. Um, I don't think I, I, I don't think I would do anything different. And as you said, Gary, they're missing out just as well as I am. Yeah, but see, you you made a key point. When you say people are not doing business with you and you you go in the crowds, you feel like that elephant in the room. But see, what I've learned and I learned early on is that I'm I'm a I'm a quiet guy by nature. That's I really yep. quiet. I, I stay to myself. I'm my only child. I don't I don't if you you got business over there, I don't get in people's business. I mind my own. But the one thing that I learned early is that. When I, when I come in a room and people don't know how to approach me, I have different looks to invite you in. And I have I have looks that I don't want to invite you in because mm -hmm. as athletes, we already skeptical about what people want and people coming at you and this and that. Right, right. But so when we go in certain environments, I have a look on my face when I look at you and I make eye contact with you. I'm basically allowing you to approach me. Right. Yeah. Right, right. And so. That's what we that's what the media have done to us, that we have to put on a uh, look people out of eye right. and say, hey, man, I'm approachable. Don't mm -hmm. believe what you read. I can I can see it a mile away. Mm -hmm. And so most people say, oh, you just paranoid. No, I'm not paranoid because <laughs> I, see how people, I see how people step to me. They step mm -hmm. with caution, which they ought to. But but at the same time. You know, I have to put on the face and look them eye to eye to say, hey, I'm approachable. I'm just like anybody else in this room. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, it's from, you know, just being the athlete. And again, we're speaking to uh, Gary Sheffield, 22 year Major League Baseball player veteran. Um, I just that fan base, uh, they think they own the team. Right. They think they're the owner of the team. They think they pay. They think they pay your salary. Like, oh, we get all that stuff, fans, right? Sports fans. We love you for it, but you have to realize these people are human. It's mm -hmm. like, again, your invite you in face that you're talking about, Gary, somebody else is going to take that, oh, he's an a-hole face. Yes. But it's your invite. that's your invite you in face. So yes. it's not you. You can only be you. So fans out there, sometimes just give the players the benefit of the doubt that sometimes they have long days. Sometimes they have fight with their wives. Sometimes they have, you know, fights with their kids. And sometimes uh, siblings and parents and brothers and sisters, they pass away and we having a bad day, you know, but they don't take those things into consideration and always want to say, oh, there's the typical athlete. He's being a jerk or he doesn't want to give autographs. Like, no, like we're, our invite you in face is just the only face we got. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, you go to different cities and you, you hit different words, different tone. I know yeah. going in as a visitor to play in Philly ain't the place right. you want to go in to be a right, right, yeah, that, right, right. It's it just brutal. And, but these fans, um, they make fans that's really good fans pay for what they say. Yeah. So when yeah. you come out of the locker room and you're in that game mode of I'm going out here to destroy you, and then we don't come down from that until probably Dang. one, two in the morning when we're trying to go to bed. Right. So right. now when I come out of that locker room and I see somebody over here wanting my autograph, I'm thinking about you as them. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. now I may be not be in the mood for walking over there and giving you an autograph or dealing with you because I I I, I view you all like, hey man, y'all was out there calling me this and throwing quarters yep. at me and all kinds of stuff <laughs> at me, and now right. you want an autograph. So so at the same time, when I when I start doing this over time, I start realizing, Gary, don't be that way because everybody ain't bad. It ain't, right. that, that's, that's probably the person that wasn't doing it. You know, right. So, so I have to, I have to look at it like that because I'll be a hypocrite if I said that I'm, I'm a judge everybody the same when I didn't want to be judged. You know that that way. So mm-hmm. I have to be fair all the way across the board. Absolutely. So, yep, 2020 is behind us. 2021 is confirmation that life is short and seems that we're getting older. T, we have to start thinking about things like life insurance to kind of help prepare our loved ones and our kids to get life insurance? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, obviously with the pandemic um, that that transpired, um, and then you think about, you know, this time almost uh, a year ago, um, we started 2020 um, off with uh, uh, like just a devastating blow to our hearts and that losing Kobe. Mm -hmm. Um, Just think about his family. Um, But Obviously, a lot of people don't think about this at, at an early age, but as you get older, um, you have to think about not only yourself, especially if you have um, uh, you have uh, siblings, um, you have kids, um, spouses, or what have you. Um, you have to think about those uh, those loved ones just in case something happens. So, life insurance is very, very important. Um, so you have to make sure um, there's all types of insurance packages that uh, you can take out on yourself, um, your kids, um, loved ones, and you just don't know. You said it. I mean, life is precious. Life is short. Um, it's unexpected. And we experienced a lot of unexpected losses um, over the last year. Um, so, you know, yeah, everybody that's, that's listening um, definitely. Um, if you haven't looked into life insurance or any type of insurance, um, you definitely should, uh, you know, look into that. Oh, OK, so on that note, it makes sense why people get life insurance, especially term coverage, which is surprisingly affordable. Why not pay a bit each month to protect the ones you love? If you're asking yourself the question, choose ladder. And so when thinking about life insurance, think about ladder. Ladder makes it easy and fast to get covered. You just need a few minutes, a phone, and or a laptop to apply. Ladder's smart algorithms work in real time, so you'll find out if you're covered instantly. There's no hidden fees. You can cancel at any time. And since life insurance costs more as you age, now's the time. So cross it off your list. Ladder's life insurance. So check out Ladder today to see if you're instantly approved. Go to ladderlife.com slash popcorn. That's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash popcorn ladderlife.com slash popcorn and so you know growing going going back in your your past a little bit growing up um say you spent some time with your uncle dwight the doc gooden um Mm -hmm. back in the day did he kind of give you any of that information as far as how to handle fans you know as as he was going into the major leagues as well well he tried and Mm -hmm. and then the thing is is that i look at life different than he look at life and so Doc was okay. uh, Doc was um, the Michael Jordan of baseball in the early 80s. And yeah. he was on the, the big old buildings in New York City. The one thing that I didn't agree with him trying to get me to conform to an organization is because the Mets was married to him. Mm-hmm. And so they had a PR pro- uh, department, uh, Jay Horowitz, would tell him what to say when they ask you a certain question. So me wow. personally, as little nephew, I'm looking at it as, why are you going to say what that man told you to say? Right. That ain't how you feel. Say right. what you feel. So Dwight took the approach because he's a he's a really, really nice guy and he want to be liked by everybody. Mm-hmm. And so, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's his personality. Yeah. That's his personality. And people love him for it. But right. he said what they wanted him to say, but his feelings got deep compressed inside of him where I believe that's what drove him to the alcohol and the drugs. Mm -hmm. Because me, I'm going to tell you what I feel. I'm going to tell you what I think. And I ain't going to think twice about it when I walk away. 
So mm-hmm. I'm not holding nothing. Right. I don't got it out. Yeah. So that's why um, some things that he did, I took the good and rolled with that. And some of the things I didn't agree with, I can I, I did it my own way. And that's how I, I made it 22 years and it worked for me. Man, this is <clears throat> this is so crazy. What you just described was the same situation that I had with Jerry Rice. Right. The great Jerry Rice basically did the same thing to me. He pulled me to the side. He goes, T, uh, Gary, uh, his situation, uh, that encounter that he had with with Doc was the same situation that I had encountered that I had with the great Jerry Rice. He pulled me to the side one day. He goes, yo, because I was doing these things and media started saying this and they were being very critical, blah, 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 blah. blah. He goes, T, you got to start learning how to you're freezing again. Yeah, yeah. Like, Yo, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling right. you. I'm telling you. I'm telling them what happened in the game. If you're asking me what happened in the game, and I give you an answer, and that is not what happened in the game, what does that look? It looks like I'm not involved. I'm not engaged. I'm out there just lying. I'm just making up something. He said. So when you, you said. You said. He said. Play the game because you froze. Right. So he said. Do you got to learn how to play the game? Right. He said. I got to learn how to play the game. Like basically, just yeah. kind of like he said. Just give him some little answer. Blah 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 blah. But I'm like, no, nah, you ask me something, I'm going to give it to you honestly. I'm going to give it to you how I felt in the game and what I thought about the whole situation. Well, that's that's the game of, bit, the, of life mm-hmm. that people always tell you how to move. You want to move with the big dogs over here. You got to play the game. <laughs> I, I call that a bunch of people lying to each other. Mm, right. <laughs> with each other. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's what I call it. I, I say you lying to him and you faking with him. I don't mm-hmm. operate like that. My circle right. is my circle. And one day we're going to get out of my circle. You're going to know where I'm coming from and I'm going to know where you're coming from. So I don't have to worry about certain things. Right. It's basically politics. And that's if you think about politics, look at what we are. to well, Look at what we are today. Look right. at what just happened in 2020, the last four years, especially the last, you know, eight to 10 months. What has transpired? Please, please don't. Of please don't look at that. Please don't look at that. <laughs> hey, I, 2021, we're moving up. We're moving on. Right, right, right. Absolutely. But, you know, what I was saying it was just yeah, the, I know. the politics of it. Yeah, for right. sure. For sure. That's crazy. Uh, you know, because I'm, I'm listening to you, Gary, like I'm, I'm understanding what. I guess we always think, because again, we're talking about football, right? I've probably seen a little bit more of basketball post-game interviews. I've never had this uh, coming from the from the baseball world. I didn't know there was that much, um, I guess, backlash, if you will, from the the inner circle of the baseball fan base. I just thought it was more of a, you know, we cheer for you because you – your, your baseball, right? You guys was the, the number one sport in the world for a hundred years and all baseball players are love. And mm-hmm. it's like, it, now I'm getting to the point like, wow, this is it's not, your career wasn't as smooth as, oh, he played 22 years in the major leagues. His life was great. Mm-hmm. Like, no, like you sound like you really went through these things mentally and emotionally for re- literally 22 years of your whole career. Well, I don't want to discredit hell, but I went through hell. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I'm just being honest, you know, um, I was a guy that mind my business and I put up my numbers and I did my thing. And, you know, you had, you know, the, the, the organization felt like they needed to get me to conform a certain way. Mm-hmm. That's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's not going to work with me. I do things the way I do it and I'm going to give you everything I got. Mm-hmm. But you get in the way of what I'm doing. That's where the problem starts. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not bothering nobody and I'm not going to let anybody bother me. So my thing is that I'm paid to do a job. I'm paid to be respectful. And because you don't have to pay me to be respectful. I was raised to be respectful. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and the bottom line is you, you damn as well going to be respectful to me. And mm-hmm. when I don't get that, people wonder why I can go from zero to 100 is because what I, what I, what I don't do to people, people will do to me. And, mm-hmm. and 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 be careful when you do it to certain people because they will go to 100. And that's me. Absolutely. Because don't right. don't try to calm me down now when I wasn't bothering you, but you just started bothering me. You poked and the that's bear. That's how I look at it. You poked the bear. Don't poke the bear. Don't poke the bear, you know, the nature of the beast. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, now you have a sports agency, right? Right, right, right. So now giving this uh, tutelage or this information back to 
the players? How are you giving that message to them? Are you saying be, do just like I, you know, do what I did? And I said, be brash if you have to, or you're just saying more be yourself to like the younger players. It's simple. Be yourself. You know, mm-hmm. if you're a guy that's not outspoken, be that. Right. But don't discredit a guy that is. Mm-hmm. Don't 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 validate the media when you try to act like this don't happen to you. See, one, once again, we all understanding now that a lot of things that happens to minorities in this world mm-hmm. and a lot of guys that play sports try, may not want to acknowledge it because they don't want to. They don't want that kind of smoke. I was always that guy to stand on the front line and tell you about these issues. That don't make me a certain way. I'm just addressing a problem that exists over and over and over. I don't react to something one time and say, this is who you are. No, it has to happen repeatedly for me to speak on it. And so just validate when somebody is taking a stand that you won't take and say, hey, he he is some some validation to what he's saying, Mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, because the reason they don't do that is because they don't want to talk about the encounters that they encounter. Mm. Okay, so let's take it back to 2005, 2007. If the movement, right, Black Lives Matter movement was happening at that time, how would you have approached it as far as being a team leader, um, taking a knee, you know, any any types of these things you would have had your team doing seem like you would have been the team leader, right, that you, they, you would have had them fall in line after you, like, in through that process? Absolutely. I was doing it. Yeah, what time. demonstration? This is what people don't understand. I was doing it the whole time. Really? Wow. Yeah. You never, you know, certain teams when they had policies to go stand out on the line and stand in front of the dugout, mm-hmm. other times I, I I don't even come out till it's over. Mm. And then I go run down the line. See, when is when it's over, then you'll see me run out doing the line. I was doing mm. it all the time. Mm. See, you know, it was just nobody was knowing what I was doing. I was right. doing it all along. But at the same time, when, when organizations say this is my policy to do this, then I went with the organization policy because mm-hmm. if 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 I would have made if I would have said, oh, well, I ain't standing for the national anthem because of this and that, it's the same thing with, with Colin Kaepernick. Right. You know, it cost him his job, and it cost him a lot of things. But I'm in a I'm in a white man's game. Mm-hmm. See, I'm in a white sport. Mm-hmm. See, this is not like football. This is not like basketball. You know. Mm-hmm. And I would that that don't mean I was conforming to what they say. I was right. a rules guy. If one guy had to go by the rules, then we all go by the rules. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, I based it on. Mm-hmm. Right. Is is there racism in baseball? Yeah, what a question. <laughs> <laughs> racism everywhere, man. But, but, but at the right. same time, it's all kinds of different kinds. Right. And so uh the bottom line is this, man. People are who they are. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and to be honest with you, I'm going to tell you a story, man. I, and this is true with me. Every guy that I felt that was a racist on my baseball team, mm-hmm. any organization I've ever been with, turned out to be one of my best friends. Mm. And because awesome. I'm willing to go somewhere with a conversation, a lot of guys is not willing to go. Mm. Because one time when I step in a room, I make it clear. I don't want to hear no racist jokes. And I don't want to hear these type of jokes. And if I if I hear these type of jokes, and if I well off and do something to you, don't be surprised. Right. See, because I'm not going to explain myself. I'm not going to say it again. So I make myself clear when I walk in a room. So now we don't deal with the 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 the, 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 the white black jokes. Mm-hmm. See, I don't I don't play well in that area. Mm-hmm. And so I make it clear up front. Don't cross that line with me. So that that guy that I thought was racist, he knows not only that you can say something, you're going to have to be about something. And so now we we open up dialogue and we communicate and then they wind up being my best friends on the team. Wow. That's awesome. That's That's, awesome. Yeah, that 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 was a great story. That was a great story. Yeah. Yeah. So what so why do you think that the more Latino players now that they're that are coming into Major League Baseball it, the the perception is well, the black players we're we're being too difficult with contracts and trying to be who we are off the field. So you guys want to bring in these Latino players who might have lesser talent, but you can uh, control them a little bit more. What would you say to that narrative? Where did you get that from? Where you heard that first from? Um, I've I read it on some Google website. 
I, I don't long, know. How long ago? Oof. Uh, literally probably a week ago. Okay. I don't know. I don't know when the um when the whole. When no, no. The, I'm, I, it doesn't. I I just wanted to make a point. Yep. I yep. said this twenty years ago. Wow. And see, I got crucified for it. But the fact of the matter is, I said Barbatum that Major League Baseball is going to be it's going to be no blacks exist. Wow. In this game. And I said they're going to get Latino players that look black, look like but us. when they speak, there's mm. no English coming out. I said this 20 years ago. Mm. They tried to crucify me for saying that, but I was ahead of my time. I saw it coming because what's wrong with a black player knowing his worth? Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm going to speak up for what I'm worth. Okay? Right. Now, what the, the, the issue is, they want to cut down labor. They want to they want to go overseas, bring over guys that pay them a lot of money. They want to put these organizations over in, in, in Dominican and Puerto Rico and sign these kids at 16 for a million bucks. Mm-hmm. They got them for service time of five, six years before they start paying them real money. But us, we go in the draft, we get big money coming out. So basically, when I grew up, you'll see scouts everywhere in my neighborhoods and in, mm-hmm. in the hood looking for us. Mm-hmm. They ain't come around here anymore. They ain't looking for us. Wow. Because they're they, they, because the Latino players, they want to get off the island. They come over here to hit 300, 30, and 100. I've been in this game long enough to hear the language that they talk. And all they want to do, they respect the game. They love the game just like we do. They deserve a fair chance just like we do. But that's who they're looking for now. Mm-hmm. And what, what happened was the media tried to crucify me and thought that the Latino community was going to come down hard on me. But the Latino uh, group supported what I said. The one point I put in there, this is the point that they struggle with. If you don't conform to what they tell you or what they say and do the things they want you to do, they'll send you back across the island. Mm, control. And all the Latino. So, yeah, man, you, you hit the nail on the and head. And all the Latin community came to behind me for support. They say you hit the nail on the head. Man, that's the, the man, wow. you couldn't have said it any better, uh, Gary, because when he asked that question, I kind of knew what you were going to say, that the idea that these managers, these owners, they were going to go out there and try to get these Latino players that look like us, yep. but they're not like us. And then at the end of the day, I went through some of that same, some of the same situation when it comes to their ownership and managers, management, they want a lot for a little. They want to get all the production out of you, but they don't want to pay you nothing. So that's what you mentioned. And that's what you meant about the whole labor situation. And that's what's so hard. And I I, I really wish a lot of these football players, especially black football players, yep. uh, players of color, they have to understand, especially in the National Football League, they make up of 70 plus percent of the league. And all they got to do is just band together to get what they want. Because over the years, last 10, 15, 20 years, even when I was playing, these players have been harping on. They've been seeing the money that baseball has been giving out. They've been seeing the money that basketball players are, are, are getting. And they feel like, oh, man, I need I want to get some of this money. And they feel like if you're not really in one of the skill positions, mainly quarterbacks, you're not going to get no hundred to two hundred million dollar uh dollar contracts and that's what these guys need to do is stand and band together and you said it no know your worth but you know what their worth but you know what guys here and there yeah but when but when you see here and look at this this is why i love lebron james and this is the thing that i tried to do and during my time is get players to join each other's team and Mm -hmm. guys wouldn't do that because Mm -hmm. they wanted their own team and this and that but I wanted to join with other great players and we win lots of championships, but mm-hmm. they didn't want to do that. Right. So the point is, is that LeBron James is putting up, put a group around him, which I tried to do as well. But back then it just wouldn't fly. Right. So we tried to put a group right. around lawyers, uh, guys that make sure they can do our contracts. Mm-hmm. They can do uh, endorsement deals or what have you. LeBron James has done it the right way and he's done it with such class and grace and raising his kids and being with his yeah. wife at the same time. Mm-hmm. I admire that. I tell my kids, if, if, if y'all say we want to be like somebody or look up to somebody besides your dad, 
I, I, I welcome you to look up to this guy because this right. is how you do it. Mm-hmm. Because this man is is, is, right. is the number one guy that got all of these NBA players thinking before they sign a major contract. True. Because true. Norm- normally when they throw out money to you, you say, you going to give me what? <laughs> Right. What, do what do I sign? What do I sign? What do I sign? <laughs> you know, but you won't understand what are you signing? Yeah. LeBron has opened the door for guys to understand what they're signing. Because I remember when I was with the Florida Marlins, people would laugh at me. Why you got blanket no trade clause in your contract? Because what it says, it's a blanket no trade clause because it's got club <laughs> on it. Okay. Right. And you can't break it. And so right. now look what happened. One year into that contract, we win a championship, and then I, then all of a sudden, they done traded me to the Dodgers without my permission. Mm. So I went to L.A. to talk to them out of respect. Mm-hmm. But I told them, taxes are higher, cost of living is higher. You got to pay me more to come here. So they had to write me a $6.5 million check wow. just to leave the team. So when I started doing that in my contract, I opened up the door for other guys to do it. And I mm. taught other guys how to do it. And then when I re- retired, guys say, hey man, you should be an agent, man. You can help me out with this and that. So I do it on the, you know, for fun, mm-hmm. but but anybody that need help, I got my license to do it and make sure you get what you deserve. That's awesome. Now, do, are you having these conversations early with players that you guys are having at your uh, agency now, or do you kind of wait for them to kind of get into their fourth or fifth year? Well, I try to get them when they're young, but at the mm-hmm. same time, I don't chase anybody. Right. You know, the information is out there. If T.O. say, man, we're training over here at 830 and everybody, T.O. walk around with his shirt off and nobody ain't there at 830, that's on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. I know how this man look and I know how I want to look. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there at 730. Right. Yeah, already. So, so that's the same with right. me. I don't chase anything. I put it out there. You want to be involved? Then let's do it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys want to know somebody who wants to know something about the Major League Baseball contractually, get a hold of Gary Sheffield. Has a sports agency. What's your agency's name? The Gary Sheffield uh, Agency. Gary Sheffield Agency, man. That. There, there it is. Well, yeah, but like I said, I know I appreciate you coming on. But before you get out of here, I want to get back to some lighter things. Uh, usually on the show, we, um, you know, kind of ask your thoughts on some other players. So right now, I want to get your uh, your top five, your top yeah. five hitters. Of all time, not necessarily home run hitters, but just as top five hitters of all time, in your personal opinion, they could be in any order. Um, let's say just whatever five you think. Top five order. Top wow. top five, not in order though. Like I said, they could be whatever. Well, you know, no no specific order, but your top five in your opinion, and you can put yourself in there or not. You know, it depends on you. Well, I'm gonna just say this before I say my list. Okay. If I didn't see you play, I don't validate it. There you go. Okay. Yep. You could talk all about you know, all these great players that we never saw and then you want to do fluff it up and all this. I don't buy into that okay. because I know when we step on the baseball field, if it was 1840 and I would be able to play <laughs> then and I would be able to play now. So I can't even imagine a hitter being better than Barry Bonds. That's number one. Wow. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Number two is that when we talk about stats and what people do on an everyday basis, you don't get to just walk up to the plate and everybody is pitching to you and you know they're going to pitch to you and you put up these gaudy numbers. That don't mean you're the best. That means you got gaudy numbers. True. When a, when a guy walk up to the plate and they pitch around him and don't want to pitch to him, mm-hmm. then he's still putting up your numbers. Right. That's the guy I like. Right. So that yeah. guy... Number two to me is Frank Thomas. Wow. Okay. Big hurt. Big hurt. Okay. Um, number three, I would put um, in that conversation, I would put, with all of what I just said, mm-hmm. I, I'm just talking about the players that I seen play and I played right. I, yeah. that, that, I'll, I, that I'll put there. Mm-hmm. I'll put Mike Trout. Wow. Okay. okay. I mean, when young one. Young. He play for a quarter of a century, so I mean, twenty-two years is long enough to see everybody. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. So I'm, I'm gonna put Mike Trout in there because he could have played in, in the air and what he's done so far. 
Dog. Right. He's already got the nod of, right. of being one of the greatest ever to do it. And, Absolutely. And, and that's just what my I tell me. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, number four, um, based on the fear of, of hitting and, and pitching around and putting up these stats, I'm putting myself there. There it is. Okay. Okay. Respect. Respect. And and they was trying to pitch around you. And why was they everybody always, always why was everybody always hitting you? Why you why are you like you're on the top ten list of always being hit with a pitch? What's up with that? Because because I take the inside part of the plate away from you. I stand so okay. close to it. I dare right. you to come in there. Okay. Well, and hey, you dared them and they hit you. That's right. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the fifth guy is Big Poppy. Oh, really? He was okay. David Ortiz. David Ortiz. Big Poppy. That's my top five. David nice. Ortiz. That's all right. That's what's up. But now I want I want I want people to to dispute that and you mm-hmm. put up the stats, you put put up there the intentional walks, you put up mm-hmm. there the walks, you mm-hmm. look at driving a man is, and, and and uh driving a man home from second base. Going position, yeah. And you and it's, it's it's plenty of factors that goes into hitting. Right, right, right. Making a lineup yeah. better and everything else. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Again, it's, it's not yeah, it's not five things, it's a hundred. Yeah. All right. Before we go, I want to touch on something because I know over the years it's been discouraging uh, for me. Um, I went through the process of, of, of getting into the Hall of Fame. Um, you just mentioned uh, one of the guys in your top five um, that hasn't gotten into the Hall of Fame. What is it going to take, you know, self and I'm speaking mainly of you and uh, Barry Bonds to, to, to get into the Hall of Fame? Mm. Hey. People look at it for what it is. We was Hall of Famers. It's just that simple. I mean, like, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't, you wasn't playing against somebody else. And, you you know, people want to throw out different scenarios of sterile era I played with. I, I don't, I'm not afraid to talk about my era. Right. But there were guys doing steroids and there wasn't guys doing steroids. Just like there's been in any era that ever been in existence, guys have been doing steroids. Let's mm-hmm. just put that out there. That's mm-hmm. just the way it is. But who are you to 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 be the judge and the jury? Mm. Because you don't you don't know who right. and you don't know how. So the bottom line is we can get on here all day long and, and anybody can dispute what they say you did, but where is that gonna get you? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not gonna get you anywhere. So you let people say what they want to say, but the facts are what the facts are. Yeah, I was one of the best for four decades. OK. Yep. And so when I was right. playing, nobody never disputed it. Only when I stopped. Right. 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 So, yeah. So uh, my, my my next point is you've won a championship uh, 1997 with the Florida Marlins. Um, obviously, I think, you know, I guess for any player, I guess you want to be you want to be notified uh, and, and, and validated in a sense for your body your work and what you've done. And as I said, that was so eloquently, eloquently said. You know, they didn't have a problem with your status and, and the great things that you, that you did while you're playing. Mm-hmm. But why are they now having a problem when you're not playing? Right. Um, what would it, I guess, is it is it going to take, do you validate yourself um, by making it to the Hall of Fame or you don't need that Hall of Fame to validate who you are and what you've done in your career? Well, well, Tio, I'm glad you asked that question because there's a, a lot of factors in that question. Um, I think right. when Dieter Jeter been the owner of the Florida Marlins, I was the first face of the, you know that franchise. Where I should have a statue outside of their stadium. True. Oh, okay. Facts. That's facts. just a fact. But number two, the second part of your question: Why should I have to validate me when I watch players all day long never have to say a word and people validate them? Mm-hmm. And they was less caliber players than you and I. So so, so I don't want to boast about myself just to, to be in a place where I feel like I deserve to be in. Now, I'm not going to use another player as a reference of I was better than him. And it, everybody knows that, that, I, you know, that you better than somebody in there or a lot of people in there. But I don't have to do that because that, that's not going to get me nowhere. So my thing is that I'm going to let the process take its course. The facts are the facts. I'm not going to go back and hit another home run. I'm not going to do anything else. All I tried to do that when I played this game is give you 100%. Every single time I went out there, the way I went about my business, 
I made it good for people to watch it because I was mm-hmm. entertainment every single day. And if that's what sports mm-hmm. is all about, look at the pandemic. When you're talking mm-hmm. about we're sitting in the house and can't go anywhere and you'll see a T.O. on TV or Gary Sheffield and anything jumps off and now you got entertainment. That's what the sports deserve. And that's mm-hmm. what the sport is all about. Well, yeah, Florida Marlins started in 1993. Gary Sheffield brought them a championship in 1997. Give that man a statue, uh, Miami Marlins. Stop playing. Stop (laughs) playing. So, no, Gary, we appreciate you coming on, man. Like I said, it's, you know, first one of the year. Uh, Good looking out. Appreciate the support, man. Anytime, man. Y'all need me. I'm here for you, baby. All right, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks so much, man. Yeah. Hey, man, that's crazy, bro. That is so crazy, man. He, I just kept bro, he thinking went, about stuff. He was, he went through it. I, I had, yeah. No I, and the thing is, I went through some of the same things that he went through. Like, even, like I said, even if you, like, I've talked, I've talked to Barry Bunn. When you talk to those cats off camera, boy, they let you, boy, they let you really know how, how they feel. Barry, mm-hmm. Barry is it, Barry is the same way. I need to get Barry on here. Yeah. We need man, to get Barry everybody, on here. Especially saying, after Gary, too. That would, that'd be, That'd be a good one. Right. Yeah. That I mean, again, when I played in San Francisco, though that was the that was the time. That was uh those were the years when when Barry Bonds played with the Giants. You know yeah. what I mean? Bro, he was big, bro. He was huge. And so for me, man, like for him, like I said, and Gary not to be in the Hall of Fame, considering you know what they've done, man, bro, it is it's it's it's, it's a travesty. It's 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 ridiculous. Yeah, especially when you go back and look at it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you again, I'm looking at the Miami Marlins. You know how expansion teams are, right? Miami started in 1993. Right. They're not supposed to be in the World Series four years later. Gary no, got exactly. there in, not, what, 90, um, let's see, Gary got there in 98. No, I'm sorry, in 93. So the first year. So he had to go through all that stuff, expansion, and be the face, and get into the community, and do all that right. stuff. And, and, and if you look at it, he's, he wasn't only just, uh, again, just a, a game changer. Again, I mean, he changed a lot for that organization. The whole, he is the organization. <laughs> that, exactly. <laughs> just think what, look what he did with that organization, for that organization. That That's yeah. crazy. And for him, not, again, like I said, I mean, that you feel like you've done a whole lot of things and you feel like you're deserving of it. There's nothing wrong. Like he said, it's about really him knowing his worth. And he had, he's got 22 years of it uh, to know his worth, his value and what he's done for, for organizations. And for him not to, again, be recognized in the highest um, manner or standard, uh, especially with, with, within that organization. I mean, it's, I mean, I think honestly, Derek Jeter being over there, uh, he should obviously again get the ball rolling, push the envelope as far as recognizing, uh, you know, Gary mm-hmm. Sheffield for what he's done for the organization. And yeah, and they ex teammates, their friends. He brought them right. the first championship. Yeah, give that man a statue, Jeter. Stop Basically, playing. give this dude his roses, man. Give this dude his roses because. Man, he did it, man. Uh, man, man, we appreciate, uh, you know, Gary coming on, a longtime friend. And, uh, again, I, I once I met Gary, I didn't know that we had, you know, obviously similar personalities until I started hearing a little about, you know, who he was, how he was. And, you know, again, people have, you know, basically have mentioned, you know, me and his name in the same breath and even Barry Buns and I in the, in, in the same breath. Unfortunately, had you not, you weren't able to do that. But unfortunately, you, you don't even know how to play baseball. Like that, so even when count. you hear me say something like that, when I'm named and I'm mentioned with greatness, man, you should be giving me my roses. Start out. Start out your 2021, man, and give me my, my give me my roses, man. Don't be a hater all your life, man. Don't be a hater all of 2021. That's going to be my new slogan for you. Don't be a hater all of 2021. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, I ain't <laughs> hate, man. You know what I mean? We just there give you is. facts, man. We just facts, man. Give you some of these factuals. Hey, one thing about T.O.'s opinion, it's not a fact. You dig? <laughs> yeah. There it is, Let's ladies and gentlemen, it. Gary Sheffield on Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast. And again, I know you guys are subscribing to the YouTube channel. Those numbers are going up like crazy. But we also ask you guys to go over to the Himalaya app, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcast, And also subscribe and hit and or hit the follow button so we can get the audio numbers up as well. 
Yep, yep. We appreciate that. Again, just to reiterate what he said, definitely subscribe to the Get Your Popcorn Ready podcast on the Himalaya app. Uh, that's Spotify, iTunes, uh, Apple, wherever you get your podcast, please tune in, uh, subscribe, share, uh, give us some love, feedback, because we need it. Um, I mean, we, we're getting our followers up, but we need we need more by the end of 21. So we appreciate the love thus far. And if you want to see, obviously, the video version of this, go to my YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com slash Terrell Owens. Yeet, GP Aura. Yep, yep. And that's our wrap for the first show, first episode of 2021, The Great Gary Sheffield, who played 22 years in the major leagues of baseball, trust me, that is no easy feat by any means. Um, definitely this guy should be in the Hall of Fame uh, here coming soon. Um, but as we do uh, every time, every every outing, we come to our three and out segment and nobody does our three and out segment better than my guy, Hatch. Hatch, take it away. Let us Let them know what our three and out segment is. Our three and out segment is basically the three points that we take away from the show that we think that you, the audience, are or will be more engaged with and more take away from this conversation that we just had with the future Hall of Famer. I'm going to put it out there. Uh, future Hall of Famer, Gary Sheffield. Right. Um, and again, I think, number one, I wanted to start out with uh, talking about how he his perception on legacy. Right. Like the numbers uh, don't make you a Hall of Famer type of legacy that he was talking about. Right. Yeah. I think it's about the greatness of a, the, the individual greatness uh, of a player in the Hall of Fame. That's that's the whole thing about the whole premise behind the Hall of Fame is recognizing that individual's greatness. And when you think about some of the points that he made um, and he and, and I, I saw it clear as day, I heard it and it made sense. When you have great players, uh, you knowing what they're going to do and you're pitching around them, mm. uh, trying to get them out and you're pitching around them for innings after innings and, and hitting them. Still, <laughs> right. And they're still able to produce and put up those numbers that. That in itself signifies a person's greatness. And so when you think about uh, him, Barry Bonds, and a host of other guys uh, that are on the outside looking looking to get into the Hall of Fame, uh, he couldn't have said it any better. That's how you identify greatness, and he's one of those guys. And like I said, there's a number of other guys that should be in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. I think there's a number of other sports where they need to take the same thing. It's not always about the numbers. It's about right. you know, how they're perceived um, from their – I guess they're uh, the people they go up their against. Peers. Yeah. Their peers. Yeah, peers. Absolutely. Uh, number two, I thought that was, a, which which was amazing, was when he said approximately close to 20 years ago, how right. he was making the statement that there'll be fewer, lesser, or and or no African-American pl- players in baseball. And now you right. look up and there's very few, right? The Latino community has... Um, you know, is very dominated, <laughs> dominated, over. you know, you probably double the percentage as, as far as for the African-Americans in baseball. And again, he said this 20 years ago and got convicted for it. And now you're seeing it happen and going into real fruition. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the last one uh, is something that I can definitely relate to is uh, obviously you have uh, what he said and how he described it is Doc uh, Dwight, Doc Dwight, uh, Doc Gooden. Uh, he was mm. kind of like the Michael Jordan of baseball uh, yeah. in his era. And this was kind of like his mentor. And Doc was giving him some advice as far as how to handle the media and things of that nature. Uh, Jerry Rice, like I said, I related to this this topic uh, because Jerry Jerry did it to me. You know, I was having mm. some issues uh, with, you know, people speculating and, and, and being overly critical uh, about who I was and what I I was doing and he was like, yo, you got to give me some advice on, you know, what to do and how to handle it. And Doc Gooden gave uh, Gary, J- Gary Sheffield some of the same, uh, the same advice. And Gary's like, look, I'm going to be me. You do you. Uh, and honestly, if you look at the similarities, that's not really how, how we are. That's not how we were raised. Um, again, you want honesty. That's what we're based on and what we're, how we were raised. That's what you're going to get. And some people, like I said, they can't handle the truth. And again, it, it kind of it's a little bit deeper, even with him, because of Dwight was also his uncle, you know, so right. there, there's a there's a level. Um, right. And all of a sudden you're also the, a superstar. There is a level. So, of course, why wouldn't this younger version or this younger kid just do exactly what Doc Gooden is telling him to do? And he didn't. 
uh, that kind of right. shows his character. And again, that's what got him to be, uh, again, nine time all pro or all star in the, in the major leagues. So again, thank you, Gary Sheffield, for coming on today. Um, again, I think I got a little bit of that same, uh, I guess, the same advice. I think Chris Carter was telling me how to handle the media. But since I never scored a touchdown, I didn't have to talk to the media. So there it is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Our, our first show of 2020 of Get Your Popcorn Ready podcast. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to subscribe on the Himalaya app or wherever you get your podcasts. Right. And that's on Apple, Spotify. Uh, definitely. Uh, we need those links. We need those likes. We need those uh, those comments. We need that feedback. We need you sharing uh, with any and all your friends, family, peeps, or what have you. And again, if you want to see the video version of this, because uh, we're we're bringing in the 2021 uh, New Year, uh, just fine and dandy with our lovely faces, definitely tune in to my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Tara Lowens. G-P-R-A. Yes, sir. Merry New Year to everybody. Merry New Year from Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast. Mm-hmm.